ask you, World Series Cubs, man. Can you can you t can you take me back to well? First off, can you just take me back to that season? What was that season like? It was fun. It was that season was fun from spring training. I think we made a loss two games, three games in spring training, and right then there we was like, ah, oh, you know, we got a chance to do something special. Yeah. I was, um, at what moment did you realize? Was it spring training? You realized, hey, this, this team's doing. After last, it was like after the 2015 year when we got swept by the um, Mets, and they went out to the World Series. Um, it was just something about like it was just felt like like it wasn't our time. There wasn't there wasn't the time for us right there. And then just going into the next season, you can tell like we were as a team like you could tell we really put in a lot of work that offseason season because it was seeing like you were seeing things like day one of spring training. You were just like whoa, like this might be something special. And was there was there a mind blowing kind of surreal World Series moment for you that, that stuck out? Um. No, not really. Um, I'll just say like, I'm just happy that my, my parents and my um, wife and my kids was able to be there for like, and I mean, this is like, I tell them it's not just a Royal Series, man. It's, uh, that's 108 years of, you know? So it's not just, oh yeah, this is a typical World Series. It was, you know, a 108 year curse, they say. So, but um, nah, man, I mean, I think that was the biggest that probably my highlight moment was just knowing that I got family and they was able to be there to watch it. Was, was, is there a favorite story or something behind the scenes that, uh, that, that occurred there? I know the um, rain delay was crazy too, right? Well, the rain delay was crazy, but you know, that's just, that's just something for us to have in our back pocket. We don't put that out. We don't tell people what happened in that meeting because it's a private meeting. But um, I mean, overall, just being in that situation, uh, I mean, the highlight for me too was like Dexter Fowler led off the game with a homer and if you looked at the previous games before that he had us like game one he had our lefties like you know moving back he was throwing front hip sinkers bro so it was like jesus how are we gonna hit this and then you know when the lights came on the cubs came on and it was all she wrote <laughs> right on right what, what was that parade like can you take me back to what was that uh, like yeah the parade was nice man it was it was like you know you see like the Blackhawks, so they were, you know, they won the uh, Stanley Cup when they won, and then you see like other teams, you know, you get to see it, but to actually be there and be part of the parade, dude, it was nuts. I mean, it was like there was, you couldn't even see the asphalt. That's how many people was out there. And when we got on the stage, it really looked like we just kept seeing people and more people and more like it's like it never stopped. I, for once, for one second, I thought we had people sitting in Lake Michigan out just looking at us but nah it was it was definitely an experience of a lifetime that I wish every ball player gets to witness. Well, and, and how does it feel to just be associated with that team to always be a Cubs legend for that I'm sure you probably never need to buy a beer in Chicago and <laughs> well crazy I ain't been to Chicago in a long time so I don't know about that part but um just to be part of you know something like that is it's God blessings man everything's been a blessing to me so far um, everything's been done through him. I can't really, you know, I can't really say yeah, I did everything by myself. But in reality, man, I mean, he opened the doors for me, and the Cubs gave me the opportunity to help them at the time. And you know, it's just one of them things, man, where you just live your life, and what happens happens. A couple nights once before I let you go. Um, just what has it been like to have Juan Soto as a teammate, and just seeing what he's done? Over since he's been in the show. Ah <laughs> uh, man, he's man, they, bro, he's young, man. And he's just a sight, bro. Like seeing him work every day. Seeing, I mean, not just him. You seeing Josh Bell work every day. You seeing Nelly work every day, bro. Like, I remember Nelly was. I was in the trenches, I call it, and Nelly was in the big leagues playing for the Rangers. The year, the year they was going, they went to the World Series. The first year I got drafted. So it's crazy just seeing, you know, seeing him and then. You know, seeing seeing this whole team just you know go to work every day. Shoot, I, I wanted to ask you about too, that too. I forgot what, what was it like to be drafted by the Rangers. Can you take me to that phone call or moment? Oh uh, yeah, it was. I don't know, man. You know, it was one of those. I had Chris Kemp as my um, scout. That's who pretty much got me drafted. And it was funny because Chris Kemp saw me playing sandlot baseball, and that was Austin Rowe. And then I was drafted in the 48th round. And I never looked back ever since. And like I tell people, bro, they don't even have 48 rounds no more. That's the craziest thing in the world. And I'm like the only, I'm probably like one of the last guys to 
still be in the big leagues at the 48th round. So that's a blessing itself to show that, you know, my heart is bigger than my pride because I could have easily said no and went and tried to play college baseball, but I took the opportunity that was gave for me and I ran with it and I'm blessed to still be playing this game today. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you've had a fantastic year this year, sort of under the radar how good you've been. What is what is clicking for you? What, what what's, what's I'm healthy. I, so I tell everybody, I'm healthy now. I'm healthy, I'm confident, um, and you know, it's like my time. The world goes in a circle. And I feel like right now is my time to just continue to build on this. And that's what's been working so far. All right, last one for you, fun one. The greatest baseball movie of all time and why? Greatest baseball movie of all time, I gotta go with the young kid's favorite. The Sandlight, come on, man. I mean, yeah, we can go with Bull Durham. We can go with, you know, we can even go with um, Major Leagues, you know? But it's the Sandlot because that's what that's where I grew up. I grew up playing Sandlot baseball. Do you think, because we did the Field of Dreams game last year, do you think MLB should may, maybe look at making a Sandlot park somehow? Man, listen, if they want to make a Sandlot park, I got a Sandlot park right back in Newberry, South Carolina, man. Okay, I, it's out on Kit Cross Road. I got a whole Sandlot Park out there, bro. We cook chicken, fish, hot dog. We got live music. We got a commentator. We got umpires. We got fans. It's $2 to get in. Like, I got all this stuff set up, man. Like, and if they ever want to do that, I would just say, just go down there. Just put the field in the best condition that y'all could. And then we ain't charging nobody. Let them walk in for free. They gonna have food. They gonna have things for the kids to do, and we'll have a whole baseball game, man. I'm telling you, it's it's love. It's crazy, but it's dying down now where I'm from. But back then, dude, I wish they would. I wish they put scouts out there because honestly, you got some kids that if they just get the opportunity, it'll come. And on top of that, it's the majority African Americans get them more in the game. That could be a way to just you can just get them in minor league ball. Just show them, and that just that'll open up everything for us. Right on, right on. Carl Edwards Jr., I really appreciate the time. Thank you.